is the Son of Man. Who is this Son of Man? And I'm extending that to one of the claims that he made as the Son of Man this morning. Who is the Son of Man? Who sows the good seed? We asked, why did Jesus use such an obscure title for himself? And why could, and when he could have used any one of many better known titles, we concluded that Jesus chose to reveal himself, to, to teach about himself to his followers, that he is the Son of Man, because he is using this title he is, was able to, be, to combine in one title all of who he is as he taught about himself. He chose this title because he was fully human. He is a son of man. He was born to the line of David to be the Christ. He is the Christ, the anointed one of God, who is to sit on the throne of David and rule forever. He is the son of David. But the time for his rule had not yet come. We also taught that he was and he is the son of David, but the people did not yet understand that the fulfillment of this prophecy was not going to happen in his first appearance to Israel. He was and he is the Son of God, the one and the only Son who came and was born to the Virgin Mary. He is Emmanuel, God with us. He is God the Son, but even his deity was not anticipated by those to whom he had come. His work and his mission were not understood. He was the light that was to appear to Galilee of the nations, where he began to preach the good news of the kingdom of God. The glory of God in, this, in the sun appeared to them, but they did not recognize him. He was and he is the Lamb of God who came to take away the sins of the world. But this suffering servant from the prophecies of Isaiah was also unexpected. So Jesus begins to teach about himself using the title of the Son of Man. And over time, he will reveal to those who, are fo who follow him his true self, his mission to the world. He is the fulfillment of the prophecies of Daniel and Isaiah, the one who was to come from heaven and was born to a virgin. He is the son of man who was one day to ride on the clouds and enter into heaven into the presence of the Ancient of Days and receive all authority and power to rule heaven and earth. At the time of his appearing to Israel, no one seemed to understand this future glory of the Son of Man. So Jesus will teach about himself piece by piece with one truth and revelation at a time, trusting that the Father will open the minds of his followers to know him as he is. Think about him. The Son of Man, he has authority to forgive sins. He came to fulfill the law and the prophets. He is the Lord of the Sabbath. And today we will look at the Son of Man who sows the good seed for the kingdom of God. The Son of Man calls his disciples and proclaims the good news of the kingdom of God. And in Matthew 4, 18 through 28, Matthew tells 
what Jesus did as he went out in Galilee and called his disciples. Those who were chosen to be with him, to be his witnesses to the world, witnesses of his appearance to Israel, his coming. While walking by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. And going on from there, he saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, in the boat with Zebedee, their father, mending their nets, and he called them. Immediately, they left the boat and their father and followed him. He went throughout all Galilee, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease, every affliction among the people. So his fame spread throughout all Syria, and they brought him all the sick, those afflicted with various diseases and pains, those oppressed by demons and epileptics and paralytics, and he healed them. And great crowds followed him from Galilee and the Decapolis and from Jerusalem and Judea and from beyond the Jordan. The gospel of the kingdom of God. It is the good news about the coming of the kingdom of God that Jesus preached to the masses of the people who came to, fo- to him from, for healing. He taught them in parables about the kingdom of God. And he healed their diseases, cast out demons, healed epileptics and paralytics. The news of this of his teaching and miracles spread throughout all the region, the region of Galilee, across the Jordan, into the Decapolis, the ten cities, and in Jerusalem and in Judea, and as well as in far distant region of Syria. And people came to hear him. The kingdom of heaven is like a man sowing good seed in his field. In Matthew 13, 24 through 30, Matthew records one of his parables, the parables of the weeds or the tares and wheat. Verse 24 in Matthew 13. He put another parable before them, saying, The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while his men were sleeping, his enemy came and sowed weeds among the wheat and went away. So when the plants came up and bore grain, then the weeds appeared also. The servants of the master of the house came and said to him, Master, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have weeds? And he said to them, An enemy has done this. And so the servants said to him, Then do you want us to go and gather them? But he said, No, lest in gathering the weeds you root up the wheat along with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. At the harvest time, I will tell the reapers, gather the weeds first and bind them in bundles to be burned, but gather the wheat into my barn. Jesus compared the kingdom of God to a man sowing seed in his field. When it sprouted, The good seed sprouted along with the bad seed. The tares, or the darnel weed, was a particularly undesirable weed 
resembling wheat in appearance, and it possessed a seed which is poisonous. It looks like wheat when growing, but it does not bear good fruit. A field with, of wheat grows until the harvest time, and then the reapers go into the field and gather the wheat and burn the tares. The field then is producing wheat for the harvest time. And there have been a lot of wheat growing this year. I, I don't remember seeing quite so much in the fields around Mattawa, but there were some beautiful fields of, of ripe wheat. There is a harvest time, time to gathering when the ripe crop is ripe. In Matthew 13, 36 through 43, Jesus explained the parable of the weeds or tares. Verse 36. This is our passage that we read this morning. Then Jesus, then Jesus left the crowds, went into the house, and he and his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the weeds of the field. And he answered, the one who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. And the good seed is the children of the kingdom. The weeds are the sons of the evil one. And the enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the close of the age and the reapers are the angels just as the weeds are gathered and burned with fire, so it will be at the close of the age. The Son of Man will send his angels and they will gather out of the kingdom all causes of sin and all lawbreakers and throw them into the fiery furnace. In that place there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And then the righteous will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears, let him hear. There are several things we should note from this explanation. The first is that Jesus is the one who sows the good seed in the world. They are the sons and the daughters of the kingdom and they, and they are the good seed. They are the children of God. The sons and daughters of the evil one are sown by the devil. The good seed bears fruit to eternal life. And the bad seed, which are the source of evil and lawlessness in the world, will end in the lake of fire. In Matthew 13, 1 to 17, Jesus taught also the parable of the sower. And this parable, I believe, is the key to understanding all the parables about the kingdom of God. This same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea, and great crowds gathered about him so that he got into the boat and sat down. And the crowd stood on the beach, and he told them many things in parables, saying, A sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell along the path, and the birds came and devoured them. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and immediately they sprang up, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched since they had no root, and they withered away. The other seeds fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and produced grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, and some thirty. He who has ears, let him hear. Jesus also explained why he spoke to them in parables in Matthew 13, 10 to 23. And Jesus explained why he spoke 
And he said, then he said to his disciples, and the disciples came to him and said to him, why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered them, to you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For to the one who has will, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from the one who has not, even what he has will be taken away. This is why I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. Indeed, in their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled that says, you will indeed hear, but never understand. You will indeed see, but never perceive. For this people's heart has grown dull. With their ears they barely hear. With their eyes they have closed. And they, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and turn and I would heal him. And turn and I would heal him. But blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears for they hear. Truly I say to you, many prophets and righteous people long to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. In Matthew 13, 18 to 23, Jesus also explained this parable of the sower, and, and, and he said to them, Hear then again the parable of the sower, when anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is what was sown along the path. And as for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures for a little while, and he, when tribulation and persecution arises on account of the word, immediately he falls away. As for what is sown among the thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but care, the cares of the world, the deceitfulness of riches, choke the word, I and mean, it proves unfruitful. But as for this, what was sown in good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. He indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case, a hundredfold, in another 60, in another 30. So what was the word of the kingdom of God that Jesus was proclaiming as the good news to the people? What was the word of the kingdom of God? I believe it is found in the parables of the kingdom. It is also found in Jesus' words in the Gospels of John and other, and other places. In John chapter 5, Jesus says this, The Son of Man is the Son of God and has all authority has been given to the Son. Listen again to John chapter 5, verse 19. So Jesus said to them, Truly, truly, I say to you, the Son can do nothing of his own accord, but only what he sees the Father doing. For whatever the Father does, that the Son does likewise. For the Father loves the Son and shows him all that he himself is doing. And greater works than these will he show him so that you may marvel. For as the Father raises the dead and gives them life, so also the Son gives life to whom he will. The Father judges no one, but has given all judgment to the Son, 
that he may honor the Son just as he, they honor the Father. Whoever does not honor the Son does not honor the Father who sent him. And then Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, whoever hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Truly I say to you, an hour is coming and now here when the son, when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God. And those who hear will live. For as the Father has life in himself, so he has granted the Son to have life in himself, and he has given him authority to execute judgment. Because he is the Son of Man. Do not marvel at this, for an hour is coming when all who are in the tombs will hear his voice and come out. And those who have done good to, to the resurrection of life and those who have done evil to the resurrection of judgment. So the Son of God is the Son of Man. He came teaching the good news of the kingdom of God and those who received him received in his name, him believed in his name, they were granted that they might have eternal life and they might become children of God. We have come, become children of God through faith in the Son of Man, in the Son of God, and the one who came preaching and teaching the words of God. I believe Jesus summarized it in his prayer and found it found in John 17, where he gives life to all who the Father has given to him. John 17 is a glorious prayer that Jesus said for the church. When Jesus had spoken these words, he lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your Son, that the Son may glorify you since you have given him authority over all flesh to give eternal life to whom you have given him, and this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I glorified you on earth, having accomplished the work that you gave me to do, and now, Father, Glorify me in your presence with the glory that I had with you before the world existed. I have manifested your name to the people whom you gave me out of the world. They, yours they were, and you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Now, they know everything that you have given to me is from you. For I have given them the words that you gave me, and they have received them, and they have come to know in truth that I came from you, and they have believed that you sent me. We who believed and received the word of God from our Lord and Savior, we also proclaim good news of the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The good news that we proclaim is that Jesus is the Christ. He is the Son of God who came born to the Virgin Mary. He lived a sinless life under the law. He is the Lamb of God who suffered on the cross and died for our sins. He was buried, and on the third day he rose from the dead, and he appeared to the disciples, and he ascended into heaven. He is the Son of Man 
who is now seated at the right hand of his Father, where he has received all authority and honor. He is also the son of David who will return just as he has said he will, and he will sit on the throne of David and rule the nations. All who repent and put their faith in Jesus, he gives eternal life to them who believe in him. They are saved, not because of good works but they are, that they have done, but they are saved by faith in Jesus, who is the gift of God. He takes away our sins, and he washes us clean in the blood of his son that he shed for us on the cross. The good news, <laughs> good news of salvation. So here's our conclusions this morning. The Son of Man is a, is a great title, and, and we're not finished yet as we search through all the things that Jesus said about the Son of Man. And they all come together, his various, as we understand him in the various ways, they come together in this title. Jesus frequently used the title of Son of Man to refer to himself. The Son of Man indicates his humanity. The Christ is the Messiah, the anointed one, the descendant of David. The son of David will sit on the throne of David and rule forever. Jesus is the incarnate son of God who was born to a virgin and he has received all authority from his father. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Jesus is also the one who sows the good seed for the kingdom of God. All who put their faith in him will enter his kingdom. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we are awed by your majesty and your purpose and plan that you carried out in the fulfillment of the times and seasons of when you pronounced long ago that you would send your son, the Christ, into the world and that you put in your holy words in many places the scriptures which would give those who were seeking, seeking this coming Savior, this coming Redeemer, the one who would come and, and fulfill the great prophecies concerning him, even as Jesus said, all things concerning him will be fulfilled, even those that have not yet been fulfilled. And we look to you, Lord, we look to you and we wait for the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. We look to you for the fulfillment of time when the end of ages, when this is taking place. And we thank you, Lord, that you've also given us your word, teaching us to renounce worldliness, teaching us to not seek after uh, uncertain riches, but to put our hope in you, that we might, too, might bear fruit fruit to eternal life, that we might turn away from sin in every way and, and let you reign through the Holy Spirit and the washing of your word in our hearts and our lives. Have your way with us, Lord. You are the potter, we're the clay. We pray that you would keep our eyes on you, keep us daily in fellowship with you, that we would walk and depend upon you as our rock and our salvation. We pray this, Lord, and Keep us in the faith and strong in, in who we are in Christ. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.